You made it to hump day. Welcome to Great Day Connecticut on this Wednesday where it's finally warming up a little bit. Yeah, a little bit better experience. than anything's better than yesterday. Boy, Ooh. yesterday was brutal. Sun was out. It felt good, the sun, but boy, Ooh. it was cold and it was cold this morning too. Very, very cold. Very, very cold. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Good, nice to see you. International Take the Stairs Day. You know, and this is the thing, whenever I am confronted with stairs or an elevator, I always take the stairs because one day I always say, I'm not going to be able to take those stairs. Like I look at my mother, who, you know, her health has declined in, in recent years. I look at my father, who's now uh, basically with a walker. And I'm like, these people, they they, they wish they could take the stairs. Yeah. So I look at stairs as a saying, saying, you can still take those stairs, take the stairs. And plus, it's a good form of exercise as it well. It is a good form of exercise. I, I Sometimes I'll take the elevator. But today is a day to take the stairs. My dad used to say, and well into his advanced age, he, uh, in the office where he worked, he would always take, always the, take stairs. the stairs. And he would tell, like, if they're having a meeting, he would tell everyone else they got to take the stairs, too. Take the stairs, too. Take the stairs. Good, good. Keeps your heart rate up. Keeps your lung health better. Uh, fights off a bunch of the different things. It's exercise. Just you know, get out if there you look, exercise. if you wear a pedometer or even just look at your iPhone, if you you know keep it on you enough, and sometimes you think you're moving a lot, and then you look at the number of steps, and you're like, oh, oh my, my gosh, God. yeah, exactly. So, uh, keep you know, moving. Taking the stairs. They also say, you know, don't drive around forever looking for the closest parking spot. Oh, I always park far away because I'm afraid somebody's going to roll a cart into my car or somebody's going to dent it with the next door. So I always park oh, far so away and then I walk steps. in, get my extra steps. All right, this next video has 50 million views, if not more and you're going to understand why because it's the cutest little thing ever. Watch the dog, Kara. There's a cat already in the dog bed. The dog is like, I would like to share this bed with you, but he knows that cat will rip his head off. He so messes he, it up. <laughs> he, he gingerly steps back into the couch, into the little dog bed there, and he's like, I think I'm okay. <laughs> and look, and they 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 nestle nice and cozy together. But look at him backing he's in. Backing in, he's and the like, cat is like looking at him. He's like, "Don't worry, I know. Do you mind?" I Just, love this video. This is that that it matches very well to the story we did a couple weeks ago. That uh, most cats, by standards of, are insane. Are sociopaths. Yeah, sociopaths. So yeah. he knows. He he's knows like, that he's cat. Like, that cat will scratch me hurt me and won't care. Yeah, so exactly. I better not upset the cat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's exactly true. So I walk into Stop and Shop the other day and I'm like, am I in a third world country? Because the shelves were empty. I was like, what is happening? The shelves were empty. I was like, luckily they had, I was looking for cereal. Half the shelves were empty. They had both of my cereals, grape nuts and spoon size shredded wheat, which oh. I was very excited about. Okay. But like half the shelves were empty and I'm starting to notice this is more it's, and more and more and more. The, yeah, they're saying it's becoming a lot more common and uh, it's for the first time, you know, people are having trouble finding milk, bread, meat, essentials. And part of it is the surging infections because so many yeah. people are out sick. Yep. And they can't get the people to distribute the food. They can't and there's get the a labor people to shortage. unpack the food. And there's, there's a labor a, shortage. And there's a supply chain issue. And then there's the delivery issue. There's this, that, and everything else issue. So... So back to basics. Back to basics. Now Good you know luck how trying people to find in Russia it. feel. Exactly. I'm like, <laughs> what on earth is happening? And that's it. I didn't look for anything else. I got my cereal and I left. Oh, that's um, all you're going to eat this week? Cereal. I'm a good cereal eater. I eat my cereal every morning. <laughs> what about morning. your protein? I had turkey burger last night. I made another turkey burger. Oh, that's yeah. the best. My George Foreman grill. I got yeah, it going on. Yeah, yeah, just like college. Yep. Got the George <laughs> Foreman grill. Got my canned string beans. I, I will tell you that if you go to Scott's house, his oven looks brand new. He doesn't know how to use it. I don't know how to use it. No, so, I do, because I bake Elio's pizza in there. Oh, so you've learned how to turn on the bake I and the 375. I learned how to turn on the bake, and, and that's 425. 425. So I've actually learned to adjust the, uh, the temperature as well in yeah. the oven, which is pretty good. That is really it's good. Pretty, it's, pretty, it's an amazement. It's an amazing thing. And there's a two dollar coupon this week for Elio's Pizza at BJ's. So let me just be clear: if Rob Nevins is listening, you're eating pizza and cereal. I know it's not very good, is it? <laughs> so those are not on the plan. I don't think either one of them are on the not plan. Not even on the bulk day. No, not even on the bulk day. Okay. There's sub. There's staples in the house though, like the event that I need to go to something. I go to that. It's daily. <laughs> not daily. <laughs> All right. The NFL is no stranger to branding with snack foods, but uh, Lay's is taking it another step forward uh, because they're uh, with the Super Bowl advertising, the potato chip company is launching golden grounds? Yeah, they take part of the dirt from the field and they grow the potatoes in them. So like Giant Stadium, 
They've oh. taken some of the dirt from Giant Stadium and then they've mixed it in with their regular dirt and then they've grown the potatoes in that dirt so it's truly a giant potato chip. Okay, it's grown in glory. I don't know what they do as in terms of As long as there's fields. no dirt in the chip. Well, the, the most disgusting part about this whole story is, Kara, the bottom sentence. That bodily fluids have the come The bodily out. fluids that go into the ground. The, in the dirt. The, uh, in the dirt. Hopefully they don't take it from the actual playing field. They take it from the stadium somewhere, but it's a crazy idea. There's limited, it's only 200 bags that you're going to get. If you're lucky to find one, good luck. Um, only 200 of each team have been made. All right. So you're going to have... <gasps> Something's cooking. Oreos. Oh, 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 who's that kid with the Oreo cookie? Sprinkles. Yeah, there's a new one to celebrate the anniversary, the birthday of Oreo. It's confetti cake Oreo. Yeah. Um, what is it, 110 years? How many years? Uh, 1912. 100, isn't that crazy? 100 years. 110 years. So before World War I. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, okay. the Oreos Look at this. came into existence. So I'm just a classic. I really just think it should Me be classic. Me too. I, just, I think so too. But my kids, you know, I Julian would, is I obsessed. Would give this a try, and, he's, and he definitely tries to get me to get them by saying that, but come on, Poppy had them. He ate them all the time, which was true. My dad did. Yeah, absolutely. But so he wants to try all the different flavors. Well, they got two flavored creams the signature you know and love, and another one that tastes like chocolate cake. So, and then there's yes. sprinkles inside and outside. I just bought outside. the chocolate cake one. I saw did you? It. Yes, I did Any see good? that at did Big Boy. I didn't try it. It's just right. in the pantry because... Not, um, not in your plan? It's not on the plan. Julian's home-baked <laughs> cookies were on your plan, though. Well, he did bake cookies. And you had to have and one. And they came out of the oven. That's really hard to say no to. <laughs> <laughs> there is no saying no. I mean, hot chocolate chip cookie cookie cookies that come oven. out of the oven on a snow day, no less? <laughs> no, we're doing the cookie. That's all there is to it. Now, if you, it had cooled down, I might have been able. But the fact that it's bubbling and warm. Oh, and, my God. You're making me all hungry here. And Snoop Dogg is into the hot dog business now. This He's is making the best Snoop Dogs. Snoop Dogs. Why wouldn't you do that if Why your name is you Snoop Dogg? It's like, it's we have the Snoop Dogg cookbook. We, Again, because Julian House asked for that. But Snoop Dogg is coming up with his own hot line of hot dogs. Yeah, and he's got some good recipes in the Snoop Dogg cookbook. Yeah, so he's teamed up with people like Martha Stewart in the past, and now he's uh, he's teaming up with himself. He's the self-proclaimed. He's also a mari marijuana, marijuana aficionado. He started a cannabis company called Leafs by Snoop. So you know, he's, he's, he's got a he's, lot of business. He's got That's a lot of business. That's why him and Martha Stewart are such good friends. I think it's their business acumen. I think then. Remember Snoop they hosted the Poppy Bowl together? Yeah, exactly. And they do things together. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Wonder, so. Maybe she thinks his dogs are a good thing. I, well, he, he admitted that he didn't, once he saw the ingredients that go into a hot dog, that he would never have a hot dog so maybe ever. his. But he, I guess he's changed his mind now that he saw the dollar signs. Well, maybe his hot dogs are better. Maybe they are better. We're going to have to wait and see. Let's see. All right, LL Cool J, one of our favorites to interview. Ever. Ever. He has a statue in Queens, I and love it has this. solar powered music. Yeah, from noon to five, it's going to play music from LL Cool J and I guess other artists too in this statue that's been erected in Corona Park in Queens, right by the US uh, TA Tennis Center. Uh, Billie Jean Tennis Center. Uh, it's just unbelievable. It has a little boombox like this, and it's you know more than just for show. It's uh, you know all of his hits come out solar powered. So if the sun's out, you're gonna hear some tunes. Again, from 12 to 5, in Corona Park in Queens. Go check it out. I That's love a good statue to El. You know, El I didn't realize he's from Queens. That's really cool, though, like a statue that does something. I think, right, exactly. <laughs> I mean, if it's going to be there forever, let's have it do something. Let's have it play music. <laughs> All right, I was watching a little bit of this this morning. Jamie Lynn Spears yeah. uh, was interviewed this morning. Her Cheater. book is coming out, of course, on January 18th. Um, and she's talking about, she says she denies playing any role in Britney's conservatorship, that she just has nothing but love for her sister, mm -hmm. and that this whole thing saddens her. Mm -hmm. Growing up, Jamie Lynn says she adored Britney and thought of her as another mama. But over the years, she witnessed the toxic singer's behavior. Hmm. Well, they're, I don't think they're going to be I mean, making they're up estranged soon. right now. Britney wants nothing to do with her sister. Interesting because she said, I, I was watching a little bit of the interview, that Britney has accused her of you know, stealing her songs and performing them at the award shows. She says that she doesn't, that she has spoken to her about that and that okay. they're good now. Right. But she says in her world... It was a tribute to Britney. She was singing Britney's songs as a tribute. Okay. Well, Jamie, if you're out there, give us a call. We'd like to delve a little bit more into the conversation. 
So give, uh, give Great Day a call, and we'll put you on the phone. We'll give you some time on the show, and we'll hash things out. Maybe we'll get you guys back together. <laughs> okay, there. <laughs> hey, Simon Cowell got engaged. Yeah, to Lauren Silverman, a longtime girlfriend. They have a child together. Mm -hmm. They've been together 13 years. They don't have any mutual... F they, ha they have one unmutual friend now. Yeah. Well, her ex-husband. Her ex-husband was one of his dearest friends, apparently. And then he, they're no longer friends. They're no longer friends. Yes, they're no longer friends because he married Well, his yeah, wife. they got together while she was still married to him. So. That's cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. But uh, you know what? So they got married after 13 years. Good for them. They found happiness. It's like, it's like Seinfeld and his wife. You know what I mean? She cheated and left Seinfeld, too. I mean, left, on, left her husband for Seinfeld. <laughs> I'll never forget that story. I digress. <laughs> okay. So, the Oscars will have an MC again. Thank you. I'm going to be it, doing it. It's not you. Oh. Who is it? They don't know yet. It's, well, from, uh, Kevin Hart was supposed to 2019. Host. That yeah. was 2019. And that didn't happen. Because he made those remarks. But we the, know that the, there's the going Twitter. to have a host. Yes. They said the, the first time, 2019 was without a host. They did remarkably well in the ratings, but 2020 and 2021, the ratings bombed. So they're bringing back the host. Yeah, they tried other formats, like let's just have some cameos. You know, uh, just from the aspect of you and I do a lot of events, you gotta have someone in charge. You gotta have, you you gotta have you gotta an have anchor. someone who's like running the rodeo a little bit because if you just have a bunch of different people showing up with different parts, then it just, it, it doesn't have any fluidity. What, what, Cara, what happens when you say back to you in the studio? There's no one to go back to. You gotta have somebody to go back well, to. Well, yeah, you. it's exactly like the Oscars. It sort of was like a newscast without an anchor. Just exactly. All the reporters, which are very important, but very you have important, to have something have to, to stitch it together. You gotta have the captain at the helm. You know what I'm saying? You gotta have the anchor. Well, they haven't decided yet, so perhaps you could still apply. And congrat. Well, I'll, I'll try. Here's my audition tape today, right here. Take this A block. Very good. Uh, let me un <laughs> unpuff my shirt here. Uh, Amy Schneider becomes Jeopardy's first female millionaire. She's the first woman to win more than a million dollars on Jeopardy. Only three other players in history have ever even reached that milestone. And she's also breaking other ground because they say she's, you know, she's the first transgender, transgender. woman. Transgender woman to uh, win, uh, go on this far. She's going to compete in the, uh, the Jeopardy championship, the host of whatever they call that show. Um, the host, the Jeopardy championship, where all the winners come back. All and they the compete big again. time people yeah. go back, yeah. With the guy from uh, New Haven, Amodio, I think uh -huh. is his name. Yeah, He's and Ken Jennings, who's well. now the host, he got, you know, he was the other million dollar marker, and he got to, so it's only fitting he kind of got to be there when she made the uh, milestone. Good for her. Yeah. She looks happy.